Hi, my name is Patrick and in today's episode we'll talk about Operation Anthropoid, the most important uh, act of Czech resistance during World War II. Today we are standing in front of the lower palace in Panenské Břežany. Panenské Břežany is a, a village to the north of Prague and it was here in this palace where Reinhard Heydrich uh, lived uh, during the occupation. Heydrich was the highest position Nazi officer uh, during World War II. The palace itself was built in 1840 uh, by a Stahlberg family. It was originally a German noble family that later moved to the Czech lands and they owned the palace until the beginning of the 20th century when they got into financial trouble and it was sold in an auction by, uh, to, um, to a Jewish businessman, Ferdinand Blochbauer, who bought it in 1911. Ferdinand Blochbauer was a sugar magnate and he had a sugar processing factory. By the way, it's interesting that uh, Mr. Blochbauer was a friend of uh, Gustav Klimt, the most famous Austrian painter, and he hired Mr. Klimt his wife, Adele Blochbauer, and that became the famous uh, painting Lady in Gold that later was sold in 2006 for 135 million dollars. There's a movie about it, you can look it up. So there's just a little connection to that, uh, to that painting and this palace. Mr. Blochbauer in September 1938, after the occupation started, he moved to Switzerland because he was Jewish and uh, Konstantin von Neurath moved into this palace. It was confiscated by the Nazis. Konstantin von Neurath uh, was the first Lord Protector of Bohemia and Moravia. However, because Konstantin von Neurath was soft, on 28 September 1941, Hitler sent his tough guy Heydrich to replace him. And Heydrich moved in here with his wife, Lina Heydrich, and their four And he lived here for about eight months until that day, 27 May 1942, when Heydrich, you know, after having a breakfast in the palace, he drove out in his open convertible with his driver through this gate, out on the way to the Prague Castle. And it was on the way that he was attacked by the Czechoslovakian paratroopers, 27 May 1942. After he, he died on 4th of June 1942, uh, his wife Lina and their four kids, they stayed in the palace until April 1945. In 1943, there was an accident here where we're standing, uh, you know, Heydrich's oldest son, who was 10 years old, he was riding his bicycle out of the gate and he got run over by a truck, it was an accident. Uh, allegedly, he's buried somewhere in the garden. We don't know that exactly. Uh, later, Lena Heydrich, uh, she moved to Germany with the kids in April 1945. She got a heads up that she will be prosecuted and sentenced to death by the Czechoslovakian government. So she escaped one month before the end of the war and she lived in Germany until, uh, until she died. She remained a hardcore Nazi uh, until her death and Heydrich's three children are still alive. The palace wasn't reconstructed since World War II and in 2019 it was purchased in a public auction by an undisclosed buyer for two million dollars and uh, we don't really know what will happen to the palace now but it's in a really bad shape. The most infamous owner of this palace was Reinhard Heydrich. Uh, he was appointed as a Lord Protector of Bohemia and Moravia on 28 September 1941. Uh, he was sent here by Hitler to deal with the Czech resistance which was putting in danger all the in that was very important for the German army. So Heydrich, upon his arrival, he declared martial law. Uh, he started to execute prominent Czech people. For example, the Prime Minister Alois Eliash, who was a general and a hero. He uh, sentenced him to death without trial and other prominent Czech people. So Czechoslovakian government, in response uh, in London, uh, they decided to kill him. So they put together a plan and two paratroopers were chosen and they also volunteered. Jan Kubisch and Josef Gabčík. They parachuted to the east of Prague in December 1941. They prepared the assassination for half a year and on 27 May 1942 they attacked Heydrich and uh, they critically wounded him and he died a week later from blood infection. So now we will move uh, to the location of the attack where the paratroopers killed him. 
Yeah, also guys, if you ever come to Panenskaya Brzezhany, don't forget to visit the Upper Palace, uh, which has a really nice museum in it about the Czech resistance. It was brand new since 2016, and it's uh, really nicely done. Yeah, also guys, after visiting the museum, they have a really detailed exhibition about Operation Anthropoid. So you can check it out as well. And you can check out the chapel over there too. Uh, architect of which is uh, Jan Blaže Santine, famous Czech architect. So now we're standing on the exact spot where Heydrich was attacked by Czechoslovakian paratroopers on 27 May 1942. It was 10.30 in the morning approximately and Heydrich's car was coming from up there and he was turning here, the car had to slow down, you know, that's why the paratroopers picked this location. You know, back then in 1942, the road looked differently. Uh, you know, this was built in the 70s, but back then there was a very sharp turn of the road and it passed through here and Heydrich's car was approximately where these benches are. And there was a sidewalk here where Jan Kubisch and Josef Gabčík, two paratroopers, waited for the car uh, to, to attack it. So Gabčík, when the car approached, Gabčík pulled out a stand machine gun, tried to shoot at the car, but it jammed. You know, the, the bullet got stuck in the chamber. At which point, Heydrich, he yelled at the driver to stop. He stood up in the front seat, pulled out a gun and tried to shoot Gabčík. Kubisch, the second paratrooper, had a homemade bomb, which was a modified anti-tank grenade. And he threw it at the rear of the car. And a uh, piece of metal, you know, after the explosion, piece of metal went through the cushions into Heydrich's back and he collapsed and he uh, died a week later from blood infection. So they managed to kill him. Afterwards, the paratroopers, you know, Gabčík ran up the hill and Kubisch down the hill. And uh, Gabčík for a while was chased by the driver, but we managed to shoot him in the knee and then uh, he got away. And uh, Heydrich, his, his body, well, he was injured and he was transported to uh, Bulovka Hospital, which is literally behind these buildings. And he died there on 4th of June 1942, so eight days after the attack. The paratroopers later, they uh, united with other paratroopers. Seven paratroopers were hiding in the church of uh, St. Constantine and Methodius in the, in the new town. So this is where we'll be going next. So now we're standing in front of Pecek Palace, which was built in 1929 by a Jewish family, Pecek. They were one of the wealthiest families in Czechoslovakia before World War II. They controlled 40% of European coal market and this they built it as their luxurious headquarters and it was also uh, uh, one of their banks. And uh, the, the Pecek family emigrated in 1938 to North and South Americas and uh, this became, uh, during the occupation, it became the headquarters of the Prague's Gestapo, the Nazi secret police. So people were interrogated and tortured here, you know, Czech resistance fighters in the ground floor behind the bars down there. They, they, were, they were kept in the, in the former vaults as prisoners. And, uh, you know, after the attack on Heydrich, the paratroopers hid in the church of St. Cyril and Methodius in the new town and the Nazis had no clue who did it. And uh, they wanted to punish Czech people as a nation. So on 10th of June 1942, they um, wiped out an entire village just uh, to the west of Prague, a village called Lidice. All the men were shot, all the women and children, well, most of the children and uh, all the women were sent to concentration camps where most of them were killed. And, uh, you know, <coughs> One of the paratroopers who wasn't with his friends in the church of St. Cyril and Methodius, because you know, those two guys who attacked Heydrich, they hid there with other five paratroopers. But one paratrooper, Karel Churda, he went hiding to his uh, mother's house in Southern Czech Republic. And then he heard about this village being destroyed and he wanted to save his own village. He was afraid that the Nazis would do the same to them. So he went here, he came here and he told the Gestapo everything he knew. He came here on 16th of June, 1942. Two days later, the Nazis found the, the paratroopers in the church. You can read here, you can see here, there's a plaque dedicated to the Czech resistance who were tortured here. Today, the building is a Ministry of uh, Industry and Commerce. So now we're standing in front of the church of St. Cyril and Methodius which is where the Czechoslovakian paratroopers who killed Heydrich hid here. 
Um, there were seven paratroopers hidden here, including Kian Kubish and Josef Gabčík, who were the ones who attacked Heydrich. They were hidden here with other paratroopers who had different sabotage missions and other goals. And uh, they hid here all after uh, 27 May 1942, after the attack, and they were hidden here until 18th of June 1942. So for more than three weeks. The Germans, uh, they had no clue who, that they were here. And uh, if it wasn't for betrayal of Karel Churda on 16th of June 1942, they probably wouldn't have found them. But Karel Churda, Churda betrayed his friends. He didn't know the exact location of the paratroopers. He just know, knew the location of uh, some contacts, you know, members of the resistance in Prague. And after two days, the Gestapo, through torturing these uh, Fam uh, the, the, these families, they got to know the exact location of the paratroopers. So they attacked here on uh, 18th of June 1942 at 4am in the, in the morning. So now let's go inside a church. You know the Germans, when before they attacked, they surrounded this whole church. Uh, there were 800, close to 800 SS soldiers and Gestapo officers who surrounded the church. So the, the paratroopers, the seven paratroopers were outnumbered more than 100 to 1. And uh, now we're entering the church. This is still an active Eastern Orthodox Church. You know, the Eastern Orthodox Church was helping the Czech resistance uh, during World War II. So it was one of their houses. So now we're inside a church. Uh, when the Germans attacked, it was middle of the night. Three paratroopers were upstairs, four were down. Uh, the paratroopers upstairs, you know, they had good locations. Jan Kubisch, he was located up there on the gallery. Josef Bublik was up there. And Adolf Opalka was above us on the gallery guarding the staircase. You know, this is the staircase how you can get up. The Germans, they attacked a group of 20 Germans would come in and they engaged the paratroopers. And it took them two hours to defeat those three paratroopers up there. You know, it's important to say that the paratroopers only had pistols and few dozens of bullets. You know, they didn't have many bullets, not much, not much ammunition. They had a few grenades as well. Uh, the Germans, they attacked and they retreated, retaught the strategy. They set up a machine gun in the primary school across the street. They were shooting with the machine gun into the windows. And after altogether two hours, they defeated those three paratroopers. At that point, they thought it's over. They probably didn't know about the other four paratroopers down in the crypt. However, they found a uniform on the balcony that didn't match any of the dead bodies. So they figured there has to be at least one more. So they tortured the priest and the priest told them about four more paratroopers down in the crypt. Now they first, the Germans discovered this entrance into the crypt. It's originally air ventilation of the crypt. It's a hole in the ceiling and the paratroopers had a ladder and they climb up and down. So the Germans, they using a rope, you know, they send the soldier down, but he got shot, you know, he got injured. They had to pull him out and they realized that there are four more paratroopers down there. It was very difficult to attack through here. So then they tried to attack from the street through the window, which we'll show you later. And ultimately, at the end of the battle, after altogether six hours, they found the main entrance into the crypt. The main entrance is a staircase that's located here below the carpet. You can actually hear when I step on it, you know, there's a, it's hollow and there was a, a heavy, heavy stone that was blocking the, the staircase. So at the end of the battle, you know, the Germans blew up the stone, entered the crypt on the staircase and after a short fight, the paratroopers committed suicide with their last bullets. You know, uh, there aren't nearly any signs of uh, destruction here from the battle. Uh, it was very nicely, you know, the uh, nicely repaired, repaired. The Eastern Orthodox Church repaired it. They cleaned the blood and everything. 
However, there are some details, for example here, if you follow me, you can see here, next to the hand of Jesus, there is a piece of a German grenade, you know, it's stuck here in the wood that was discovered during the research in 2016. So that's a sign of the battle. And also if you went up there on the galleries where the paratroopers died, you can see holes from the grenades that killed them. So here and there, there are signs of battle. So let's, let's go out on the street to check out the window. So here we can see the window that's leading into the crypt. So the Germans, they tried to attack through here. They had a machine gun in the second floor on the opposite side of the street. You know, they were shooting into the windows of the church. And when the battle moved to the crypt, they shot into, into this window here. So that's where, where the bullet, bullet holes come from. Then they stopped and they called firemen, Prague's firemen, and the firemen started to pump water into the crypt. You know, they would put hoses in there. The paratroopers had a ladder and they used the ladder to push out the hoses. However, then one of the firemen, he had a hook and he hooked the ladder and pulled it out. So they had no way how to defend themselves. The four power troopers down there, they had two shovels and they knew there, there's a tunnel that's part of the sewers, you know, below the street. And uh, they tried to dig a hole to get into the tunnel, you know, for the water to go away. And if it was big enough, they could escape through there. However, uh, the wall was too thick and they couldn't get through. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the battle, the Germans found the main entrance and uh, that was over. The part troopers committed suicide at the end of the battle. So let's have a look inside a crypt now. Yeah, so guys, now we're standing inside a crypt. Uh, over here, we can see that air ventilation you know that uh, this is how the paratroopers were getting in so it was very difficult for the Germans to attack through there so then the Germans tried to attack through the window you can actually see it here in the pictures you know how they call the firefighters and they're pumping the water in there they're pumping the water into the crypt and uh, the paratroopers they had two shovels so they tried to dig this hole to get into that tunnel. There's a very old 17th century Baroque tunnel that only the priests knew about. So they tried to get through, but uh, they couldn't get, you know, in there it was too thick. So the, the, the crib was getting flooded slowly, but it was taking very long time. It was also leaking, you know, through some holes in the, in the ground. So it, it couldn't get flooded, you know, so the, the Germans uh, were waiting and finally they realized there has to be some main entrance so they discovered um, the staircase which was blocked by a stone similar to this one this is the original one that was later replaced by a newer one and the newer one was destroyed by the Germans so they blew it up and they entered the crypt you can see bullet holes here in the walls as the paratroopers were shooting at the Germans coming down and uh, however they didn't have enough bullets so they saved the last bullets for themselves and they committed suicide. So that's the end of the battle. Yeah, today this is a memorial and uh, the paratroopers have their busts here. So I'd like to name them uh, Jaroslav Schwarz, then Josef Bublik. Josef Bublik was the youngest of the paratroopers. He was only 22 years old. The rest of them were in their late 20s or Gabčík was 30. Then we have uh, Jan Hrubi. He died down here, Josef Valchik, he also died down here in the crypt. Jan Kubisch, he died up on the gallery. Josef Gabčík died here in the crypt. And Opalka died defending the gallery upstairs. Yeah, Opalka, who was 27 years old, he was the lieutenant, the highest ranked officer in the group. And uh, Gabčík and Kubisch were the ones who actually killed Heydrich. Gabčík had the Stein machine gun that failed and Kubisch had, a, had the bomb. They're all national heroes today. Reinhard Heydrich was the highest position Nazi officer ever killed in World War II. 
He was in the SS below Himmler. He was chief of the security of the Third Reich. He was head of the main Reich's main uh, security office. He was also the designer of Holocaust. He was the president of the Wannsee Conference in January 1942, where they agreed on the final solution of the Jewish question. And by many, he was considered a natural successor to Hitler in case Hitler was killed. So very talented, very evil, very intelligent Nazi. And uh, it's very, it was a very good thing that they killed him uh, here in Prague. And, um, you know, in retaliation for killing Heydrich, Altogether, close to 5,000 people, Czech citizens, were killed. Uh, here we have some of their names. Uh, they were members of the Czech resistance, citizens of Prague, who were helping the paratroopers, providing them with shelter in their apartments, providing them with food, with fake IDs, providing them with information about Heydrich, you know, what does he do every day? So it, uh, the Operation Anthropoid and assassination of Heydrich wouldn't, be, wouldn't have been successful if it wasn't for the help of many, many people who paid for it with their lives. So, uh, you know, Heydrich, uh, he had many nicknames as well. They called him the Butcher of Prague, the Hangman, the Blanc Beast. So, uh, yeah, a very evil man and a very good thing that, uh, that he was killed. It was also important for Czechoslovakia as a nation because um, um, after the terror that the Nazis started after Heydrich's assassination, the, the Allies, you know, France, uh, UK, they finally agreed that Czechoslovakia is not collaborating with the Nazis that were being punished for being occupied and uh, for example after the war they renounced the Munich agreement which took us our border regions you know they were given back to us they would have stayed German if, if it wasn't for Operation Anthropoid so um, this operation was very important so guys, this is the end of our episode about Operation Anthropoid. Thanks you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the, the, the tour. Uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comments. You can also let us know if you like the video or uh, what would you like us to shoot next. You know, we're open for any suggestions for any other episodes. Um, if you'd like to tour in person, of course, you can check our website, lucytours.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. And we'll see you on our next tour. So. Have a good one. Take care, guys.